Welcome to a tutorial video on Platform Basics in Unity 2D. In this video, we're going to talk about adding a sprite object and then colliding that sprite object with our existing tile maps. To do this, we're going to start by creating a new sprite. I don't have an existing asset for this, so I'm going to allow Unity to create one for me. Down here in the project view, I'm going to create sprites square. I'm going to call this player. It's now created an image for me. I can import that and create a game object, create a sprite, by dragging it from assets into the hierarchy. It's now created this as a sprite I can use, and it's added it to the scene view. But as you remember in the previous video, we now have a problem. It's being drawn to the default sorting layer. So let's fix that right now by coming down to sorting layer under sprite renderer, adding a new sprite, adding a new sorting layer for this sprite. We're going to call this player, this layer, because it's not going to match the game object on which it should be found. Come back to player in the hierarchy view, change its sorting layer to player. And now it's drawn on top. Well, I don't necessarily want it to be white, so in the sprite renderer, under color, I can click that and make this black to match the general autumn theme I have going on here. So I now have, if we look at the game view, a black square on top of our two different layers of tile maps. Our sky, which is our default orange, and our sort of blocks down here at the bottom, which is our ground. Well, we want the sprite to collide with the ground. So we already know, because we added it in the previous video, that our tile map ground has a tile map collider 2D. To move our player in that direction, we need to add some components. While player is selected in the hierarchy view, over in the inspector view, we're going to click add component. The first thing we're going to add is a rigid body. This is a 2D project, so we need physics 2D. Scroll down and select Rigid Body 2D for this 2D project. Let's go ahead and click play and see what happens when we do this. Well, they're not colliding yet, but we do notice that gravity is set by default using Rigid Body 2D. And we can see that if we play it again, a box will fall right out of the game. So we need to keep that in mind. Anytime we add a rigid body 2D, it automatically adds a gravity scale of 1, which is what we want, but now we need to think about collisions. So remember, we added a tile map collider 2D to our ground tile map. Now we need to add a collider to our square, or our player. Well, it's a box, so we could probably use a box collider 2D. So let's add another component by clicking on Add Component. Again, this is a 2D project, so Physics 2D, and Box Collider 2D. And now it has a box collider, and it also has a rigid body. So now if we click Play, our box will collide with our ground tile map, and it will not collide with our sky tile map because only our ground tile map has a collider and our box, our player, also has a collider and these collide and prevent them from running into each other. Well, now we need to write some code because we want to be able to move this player object, our game object, our sprite called player. And so to create code for this, to create a script for this, we're going to come back down to add component Scroll down to the bottom, click on New Script. We're going to call this script Player Controller. Create an add. By default, Unity will add the new script to the Assets folder. This is helpful, but not quite what we wanted. We want to keep everything organized. In the previous videos, we created our palettes and our palettes folder. We created our tiles and our tiles folder. We want to add our scripts to our scripts folder. So let's make sure we've selected the assets folder. 
create folder and call this scripts. We will then drag the player controller script into our scripts folder so that everything is nice and neat and organized within our project view. So we know if we're looking for palettes, we go to the palettes folder, tiles, we go to the palettes, go to the tiles folder. If we're looking for scripts, we're in the scripts folder. I'm now going to open this for editing. Well, this is our player controller script. It's giving us a start function and an update function. Well, because this is attached to a game object that has a rigid body and we want to be able to move it, we need to get a reference to that rigid body within this script. We can do that to start by creating a variable to hold that reference. This is a private variable because we just want to use it within this scope, within this file. So private, and this is a rigid body 2D. We will call this RB2D. Within our start, we need to save whatever that component is and get that reference. So RB2D is equal to get component, the type of component, rigid body 2D, and close that function. So we're telling Unity, hey, go get this component that is a rigid body 2D, save a reference to it in the variable RB2D. We also need to think about when we want different interactions to occur. In Unity, there are different types of updates. Update happens, as it says here in a comment, called once per frame. But there are other functions that happen on different steps. What we want to consider is fixed update. So we will create a new function called void fixed update. And we can take the private out in front of it and just leave this void fixed update. Well, this is what we're going to use for our physics. So what we want now is to get our horizontal movement because we want to be able to move our platformer, our box, left and right. So we will do that by saving float move horizontal is equal to input, whatever is input within the Unity when someone plays it, get access, and horizontal. There already exists within most Unity projects, within its settings, some default controls. This is what we're using here, the axis horizontal. By default, that will give us keyboard access by pressing left or right on the keyboard arrows and will allow us to get that input. So we have float move horizontal. We can adjust this name, horizontal, matching the name of the get access we're looking for. Well, the get access input is not very big. It tops out at one. So we could only really move one unit at a time up to each frame. That's not quite what we want. We want to be able to move a little bit faster than that. To do that, we need to incorporate something else. So in this case, we're now going to create a new variable called movement is equal to, oh, and movement should be a vector two and not a float. So a vector two movement, because we're moving possibilities of moving are both X and Y. So two things, a vector two, is equal to a new vector two of move horizontal comma zero. Now we're finally going to be ready to use that rigid body. So rigid body has a function called add forces. This adds forces to the body and allows us to move it. So RB 2D dot add force and we're going to use movement and we want to multiply that by something. So we're going to multiply that by speed. But notice we haven't defined speed yet. 
and it gives us an error. The name speed does not exist in the current context. So in this case, this wants to be something we can change in the Unity editor. Instead of being a private variable, we're going to make this a public one. Public, float, speed. And now we're ready to move horizontally, left and right. We can come back to the Unity editor. If we click on player, give it a second to reload it. We now notice if we scroll down to our script, we now have a public variable speed. So let's change this to 10. Now we're ready to play. When the game loads, gravity takes effect and it moves down to collide with our tile map. And we can move left and we can move right by applying forces based on the get axis default controls of horizontal. Notice our box is a little silly, and if I quickly change things, I can make it flip. But our basic physics work. We can move left and right, we have a sprite, and we have code that gets us closer to thinking about a platformer. We also, in the previous videos, added tile maps of a sky and a background, and we're even closer to getting ready to do platformers. So as a review of this video, we added a default sprite by coming down to the project view and going to create sprites. I clicked on square. I then dragged that creation from the project view into the hierarchy view to create a sprite. On that, I created a rigid body 2D because this is a 2D project. Created a box collider 2D so it would collide with our tile map. I then created a new script called player controller. I did all three of these by using the add component functionality within the inspector view. In the code, I added a private rigid body reference. I used a git component within the start to get a reference to that component of this game object. I used fixed update, which is one later, so we can make sure we can do our physics. Got a reference to the horizontal movement of input get access horizontal, which uses the default input settings of a project, in this case on a keyboard, left and right arrows. I saved movement as a vector 2 because of possibilities of moving up and down, left and right, but in this case, move horizontal, left and right, and zero because we're not quite ready to jump yet. And then we're adding that force using the reference to the 2D rigid body saved within start and a fixed update. We're using its function add force by movement times speed. Speed is our multiplier and allows us to change things within the Unity editor because it is a public variable. So public float speed. Finally, we were ready to move things. We have our player, we have our two different tile maps, and now we're ready to move on to the next video by doing slightly more physics. Thanks for watching.